Hey everyone, welcome to my review on the 15th episode of the season of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, also known as the Hearthswarming Club. And I, I know I'm doing this very uh, not so formal review. I got my Bob Ross shirt on because I like Bob Ross and honestly I'm having a pretty rough day. So I know that this is different than my, how my reviews have been recently where I stand up, my phone is on my window, I'm sitting down right now, my microphone is in view. I don't really like having my microphone in view, but I gotta say it sounds better like this. And I, I gotta get these reviews out. <laughs> I want to get these reviews out really, really quickly. So I'm just going to be doing a chill sit down for these next few reviews. I haven't even watched any other episodes other than the one that I'm, you know, doing my review on right now. So I gotta really catch up and I gotta do a quick review. I'm gonna try to just to just be quick. I'm just gonna try to be quick. So, you know, let, let's just start. This episode was really good. I was a very wholesome episode. I loved the special animation style because, of course, the fandom loves when there's like a book style or just some, you know, unique animation. I absolutely love just, you know, the, the family aspect of the episode, obviously, because it's heartwarming. Even it's celebrating, you know, the unison of ponies and creatures and, you know, just, um, you know, the, the unification of friendship and whatnot. So the episode basically revolves around the new six being, uh, held back from, you know, traveling during the heartwarming vacation because a mysterious figure ruins the top of the heartwarming tree that they set up at the School of Friendship and Twilight and Rainbow Dash chase this mysterious figure down to the student headquarters where, of course, the new six are there, you know, ready to leave, but Twilight and Rainbow Dash hold them back and give them a chance to tell the truth as to who did it, but, of course, nobody says that they did it, so they take them in one by one to just, you know, talk to them privately and see if they will admit that they did it or not. And while one character goes in, the other five talk about the different holidays that they, you know, celebrate around this time or just, you know, any time of the year. Smolder explains that they have a contest where all the dragons share stories and whichever is the most epic, uh, you know, whichever story is about, you know, conquering a smaller, weaker dragon or creature, you know, is the best one and they get a pile of gems. Uh, I did like that. It was an interesting story, and I gotta say, rather, you know, sad, but, you know, once Smolder explained that, hey, that's what dragons like, that made so much sense. Yona, her story was about, basically, how her family, you know, smashes stuff. But they also braid each other's hair, or more specifically, I guess, maybe the youngest pony in the family. That seems like it. Uh, actually, I don't know, but the point is, is that simple stuff, the holiday is very simple, but it's also what yaks like to do, so it makes a lot of sense, and it was cute. And, you know, it shows why her hair is braided to begin with. Then we have Silverstream, who explains that they all celebrate a three-day festival one day in the ocean as sea ponies, where they celebrate how the ocean protected them against the Storm King, and we get a nice cameo of the Storm King. Then one day on land, and then one day both. And on that final day, Queen Novo gives out gifts, and we actually see Queen Novo. And this is the segment with the really cool animation style kind of looks like a book style in a way, and, 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 you know, just cute, loved it, and I'm glad that we actually got to see Queen Novo and not just hear her like in the previous episode in Season 8. I will say, the more that I hear Silverstream, the more that I keep thinking to myself, they just hired this voice actor and made a new character because they couldn't hire the voice actor for Princess Skystar because she was too expensive to be on the show, you know, long term. And then we have Sandbar who explains that, you know, a heartwarming doll almost fell into the fire in the fireplace. It was like a BS story. And when this happened, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, the writers realized that they couldn't afford to, you know, put in six stories in one episode. They could barely do it with a, like that campfire episode or two that happened. And also Ocellus explains that Twilight actually told the Changelings how to celebrate Heartwarming Eve, which I don't know how to feel about that, with Twilight kind of forcing a holiday. It kind of makes me think of, like, you know, those people who knock on your door trying to, you know, spread the word of God and whatnot. I don't know what to think about that, but nonetheless, Ocellus explains how the Changelings t took Twilight's words so seriously and so literally that they celebrate it in kind of a really comedic, funny way, like they took all of what Twilight said to do to the extreme, and it was actually really silly. And Ocella says that they all like it, and you know what? That's fine. It's kind of like a spin-off of Heartwarming Eve, and honestly, the whole point of Heartwarming is just to spend time with family, and that's pretty much what all the changelings do anyway now. You know, while this is going on, obviously, the, uh, the new six are, you know, coming in and out, basically saying, you know, I didn't do it. I, I told Rainbow Dash and Twilight that I didn't do it because I didn't do it. 
So we get to Gallus, and Gallus explains that they don't have much of a holiday around this time of the year, and if they do, I think it was called the Blue Moon Festival or whatever, it is not really about even, you know, being nice, it's just about not being mean or trying not to be mean, because obviously, you know, the Griffins and Griffinstone, they are just constantly yelling at each other, and yes, we have Gilda, and we have Gabby, and you know, they're trying to, you know, probably spread some friendship and happiness in Griffinstone, but still, Gallus's memories of the entire experience is that he's just, you know, not even a part of it. And after the new six are playing the blame game, basically, you know, blaming each other for being held back and not being able to visit their families and go, Gallus finally breaks the, uh, the fight and explains that he was the one who sabotaged the top of the tree, and the reason why he did that is because he has no family. He said that outright. And we know that Scootaloo is kind of an orphan, I think so, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but this is the first time in the show that it's openly stated that a character is an orphan. And that is a big moment, and the fact that it got into the episode is really big. And I gotta say, I like that. You know, it shows that, you know, not everybody in the world is happy, not everybody in the world has it all equally, and you know, some people live in very poor, you know, situations, and it sucks. But we, here we have Gallus explaining that. And that he wanted to just spend more time with the others uh, because he really had no reason to go to Griffinstone and, you know, basically sulk and be all alone. And finally, after admitting that, the others, you know, turn around and say that they're going to stay with Gallus and obviously the episode ends off happily. And that's totally fine. I gotta say, the turnaround of them really wanting to go and visit their families and celebrate these holidays and then all of a sudden saying we're going to stay in the School of Friendship with Gallus over the vacation was a little quick but that's to be expected because it's the end of the episode they only have a certain amount of time to do that i just hope that they're able to contact their families i guess there must be a way and tell them that they're not going to um, be there and also you know twilight and rainbow dash uh i think that they were fine you know they did the right thing you know wanting to find out who did it since they made a big mess by ruining the top of the tree and turning the heart at the top into like goop totally understandable to want to like find out what went wrong kind of like a mystery aspect in a way like who done it and twilight even invites the new six to you know a feast for heartwarming eve and you know invites them to to celebrate and that was just really sweet and really nice so that's really it, it was a good episode liked it loved it probably one of the better ones so far and certainly one of the better ones of the second half of season eight so far although this is only the second one so you know still got a lot to cover and, um, yep, as I thought, this video was going to be about 9 minutes long, and I, I guess it would have been about 12 minutes or 13 if I had, you know, talked slower, but I really wanted to just do this as fast as I could. So, let's hope that this video does not, um, lag when I convert it like it's done the last two times, and I hope you enjoyed this. Please share your thoughts, subscribe, do what you'd like. Hope that you enjoy. I feel like this is ASMR, Pro probably the shirt, probably the shirt.